I plead with you this night to hearken, hearken to the voice of God, hearken to the plea of the Holy Ghost that you would consider, you would consider your souls, you would consider life after death, you would consider at this coming of day that this world and all the lust therein shall pass away. And the Bible says that the dead, small and great, will stand before God. And I ask you this night, in all sincerity and all sobriety in my soul, is thy heart, is thy heart right with God? Are you ready to stand before the King of Kings and Lord of Lords? The Bible says that we are shaped in iniquity, that we are born in sin, that we are radically to pray, that from the womb of our mothers that we drink down sin and iniquity like water. And the Bible says that we are on a fast track, a fast course to destruction. You go on in a deception, in a delusion, flattering yourself, trying to tell yourself your situation's better than it is. False optimism, positivity mentality, ignoring all the warning signs, ignoring the judgment, ignoring reality. But God says, wake up! Wake up! Oh, sleepers! Wake up! You know what the leader is saying? God forbid I should leave the ball tonight without trying to wake up your sleepy soul! There's judgment coming. Most of this nation's going to hell. Most of this nation is archery in the wrath of God. There's a false gospel, false Christ, false Jesus, false Lord, false prophets, insincerity, flattery, lies. People trying to draw people to themselves and not the truth of God's word. People trying to draw people to their churches, to their denominations, to their communities. Watering down God's word so they don't lose souls. Watering down convicted, confronting truth because they don't want to suffer persecution. They don't want to suffer a They don't want to stand with God. They want to flatter you. How evil. How evil. God's not flattering you tonight, my friends.
must look to Jesus Christ, who all your sins were upon, all your wickedness he bore on that cross. All your sins fell upon Christ. Why are you going on living in your sins? Why are you going on living in bondage to sin? Oh, Jesus Christ, if you turn to Him, if you turn to Him with all your heart, He would free you indeed. He would free you indeed. He'd free you from yourself. He'd free you from a consciousness of yourself. He'd free you from exalting yourself. And you can exalt the Lamb of God who died for you and rose again, sir. Jesus Christ, sir, do you care? Do you care? Do you consider? Have you considered the death of Almighty God in the flesh? Have you considered how wicked this world is? That the only way that you and I could ever be saved and ever be forgiven is that Jesus Christ had to be slaughtered on the cross for you. Jesus Christ had to suffocate and bleed and die a bloody death on the cross. That you would be saved from the saved that you would not go to hell for all eternity. There is a life after this. There is an eternal world, an invisible world, outside of this world, outside of time. And the Bible says, the book of Revelation, that God, God allowed and caused the third of the angels and the devil himself to fall from heaven. And now the Bible says that demons and evil spirits rule this world and rule this earth and blind multitudes of millions and millions of people because they want their sins. Most of you here this night, the devil has a grip lock upon your soul. The devil has a grip lock upon your soul. You're in chain, you're in bondage to sin. Oh, and Christ wants to free you, the living God. The living God, Muhammad can't free you. Buddha can't free you. These other religions can't free you. Jesus Christ was the Son of God. Jesus Christ was God. Jesus Christ was God in the flesh. Jesus Christ was sinlessly perfect. You must turn to Him. You must turn to Him who is alive, who is ever alive, who is speaking to you this night. He's speaking to you to turn to Him in love and mercy before He comes before he comes and bends it. He's going to do away with all this world. He's going to burn heaven and earth. The Bible says he's going to make a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. The Bible says that Jesus Christ, he's going to cut off one day all wicked men. Don't be deceived! 
Build not here the kingdom of God. Don't be deceived. The Bible says, do not be deceived. Let those words be stamped upon your mind. Do not be deceived. If you do, do these things, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. You're not going to heaven, you're going to hell. If you are sleeping around, you're going to hell. If you are getting drunk, you are going to hell. If you're looking at pornography, if you're loving your love, if you're covetous, if you're greedy, if you have hatred, if you have unforgiveness, if you have bitterness, if you are living in willful sin, you are going to hell. God's not apologizing, neither am I, because I, I believe God. I believe God. And I'm not apologizing to tell you His words. And my friends, you know what? There is mercy. There is mercy. There's mercy for the humble that would repent. There's mercy for those that would call upon God. There's mercy for those that would cry out to God and say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. There's mercy for those that agree with God, but no mercy to the proud. No mercy to those that disagree with God. If you disagree with God, you can't get saved. If you disagree with your hell worthiness, God cannot save you because you are thinking there's something good about you. You're not that bad. You don't deserve hell. Getting drunk is not that bad. Being selfish, being foolish, being lazy, loving your life, loving your sin, loving foolishness, loving vanity, loving wicked TV shows, loving your reputation, loving your own person, loving God, loving other things that are good. It's not that bad. I deserve to go to hell for eternity. I deserve to go to hell for eternity. No way. No way I deserve to go to hell for eternity for committing those sins. Truly, this Everyone else is doing it. Everyone in Australia does it. My neighbor does it. My mom does it. My dad does it. They're Christians. They believe the Bible. They go to church. Everyone sins. You know, hey, we all sin. God's not alone. God's, he's a God who loves everybody. He's a God who loves everybody. He forgives everybody. In the end, love wins. All the smells, lovey-dovey, homosexual, false, propaganda, pedophilia, and everything else. No. God is a God of judgment. In fact, it says in the Psalms that God loves judgment. He's not incompatible with his judgments. Because if you understood the judgment coming for you, you would see the love of God that he shed his blood for you. An undeserving sinner. God incarnate saw you unworthy of heaven, unworthy of mercy, unworthy of anything from God but wrath. And he loved you. I have an absolute awe of God. I can weep. Now, as I think about it, I'm astonished at God's love. It's because I understand something of His judgment. It's because I understand something of His wrath. It's because I understand how God is good to speak to hell. God is good to judge people. God is good. He's not evil. God's not evil. My friends, you're evil. That's what God says. God says, you're evil and he's good. That's why you need him. That's why you need him because you are evil. You're sin. You're sin. You've broken his law. You've broken his stuff. You've broken his commandments. He's not smiling. He's not laughing. He's not playing games. You desperately, desperately need him. with Jesus Christ, that your flesh would be buried in baptism and raised to walk in newness of life with the person of Jesus Christ. God wants to do away with you. God wants to give you his son. And if you're not willing, dear friends, if you're not willing to lose everything in your life, Jesus said, if a man is not willing to forsake all that he has, he cannot be my disciple. That's what I did. It cost me everything eight years ago to follow Jesus Christ. I lost friends. My own family came against me. 
but God was with me. God stood with me because I was willing. I was willing to forsake all. I was willing to forsake this present evil world. And I found God. God's spirit came over eight, eight and a half years ago. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Blessed be God. As it with you, dear friends, has heaven come down? Have you seen the glory of God? of Jesus Christ who died for you? Have you been willing to see something of the gloriousness of the gospel to lose everything that you presently seek to gain? You must count all things but loss that you might win Christ. Everything in this lower world that's fleeing, that's perishing, that's passing away, you must give up. You must give up your rights. You must give up your will. You must die to yourself that you might have and find Jesus Christ that Jesus Christ might make a covenant with you, that Jesus Christ might pacify a multitude of sins in your life. Would you consider for a moment, dear friends, how many times you've sinned in your mind, in your words, in your deeds on a daily basis. Multitudes of chasms of sins. You've broken God's law left and right. And the Bible says, based upon one sin you commit, one lie, one time you put that trust uh, after a man or a woman, whatever it may be, you are worthy of eternal damnation. You are worthy of hell for all eternity. That's what God says. But Jesus Christ drank your hell. Jesus Christ drank your hell, folks. Jesus Christ went to the Garden of Gethsemane and He sweat great drops of blood and He wrestled with the Father and He said, Father, not my will, but thy will be done. Can you say that? Can you say that? I don't want my own will, O oh God. I don't want to do my own will, O oh God. I want to do your will. I want to serve you with all my heart. Can you say that to your friends? Can you say that? This is the living God. This is Jesus Christ who's reckoning with your conscience. He is going to come and invade this earth. He is going to besiege this world. Are you ready to meet God? Are you ready to meet the maker, the creator, the sustainer of heaven and earth? The Bible says if you're not born again, if you're born one time through your mother's womb of flesh and blood, the Bible says you are not going to heaven, that you need a supernatural, divine, saving encounter with the living God. And God would transform you from death to life. And God would take you out of the clutches of Satan's hands. And he translates you in the kingdom of God's dear son. That's God's will. That's God's will for your life. You don't have to spend your Friday nights at a club, at a bar, getting drunk, uh, dressing immodestly, seeking to sleep with this man or this woman. That's not life. Jesus Christ wants to give you true life. He's, he's angry. He's grieved at this strip in the Gulf Coast at Cavill Avenue. All the sin, all the abominations in this place. Jesus Christ is here. He'd weep in these streets. He'd weep, he'd plead with your soul. He'd tell you to repent. He'd tell you to stop sinning. He'd tell you to turn to Him with all your heart. But God says, folks, in the last days, there is a strong delusion. There is a strong delusion that God is pouring out upon this generation a strong delusion whereby you walk on in sin and you can't even feel any conviction hardly whatsoever. You should be afraid, dear friends, if you have not been convicted over your sins when all you've done according to Scripture from the womb is sin against God. All you've done every day of your life is sin against Jesus Christ. That we by nature want our own will and our own will has to be crucified. You cannot have God you cannot have forgiveness, you cannot have mercy, unless you die to self. That's what you have to do, dear friend. You must die to self. You must die to this world. You must come to Christ, that He would give you living bread, that He would give you living water. Oh, that He would give you life, that you wouldn't experience death that reigns in your members. That you experience the grace of God grace of God to bring righteousness on an eternal life. Oh, that God would give you grace, that God would bestow upon you a 
Sunday. It's favorite.